truth is this God did not create man to die. Sin brought death. Disobedience brought death. But Jesus brought life. And not just life, He brought eternal life. Today, you will have eternal life. Jesus took my infirmity. Above my sicknesses, I am healed. I am whole. I am healthy. I am victorious. In the name of Jesus. Satan! Get away from my environment. Out of my life. In the name of Jesus. Say that great height that God has reserved for me. I will surely get there. God wants to add everlasting life to whatever gift He has given you. The only man that can give you power over death is Jesus. No Jesus, no eternal life. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You are welcome to this morning. Uh, I believe that this morning the Lord is going to do something special in your life. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We are so thankful to you for giving us a restful night. And giving us opportunity to see the dawn of another day. Thank you because you are the God that gives rest. And the God that gives life. And the God that gives time. There were some people who saw yesterday. But you did not allow them to see today. We are thankful to you. Please receive our thanks in Jesus name. Lord we just ask that in a very special way. That your word that will guide us. For the day, for the week, for the month will come to us. The word that will guide us for the rest of our lives will come to us. Let this word be light in our lives. Make us wiser than our contemporaries. Make us even wiser than our teachers. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. This morning, the Lord will bless you. This morning, the Lord will speak his word to your heart. This morning, something good will be deposited in your life. Let me hear another amen. amen. How many of you really want to be great? God will make you great. Your greatness does not depend on you. It depends on God. But also, while I say that your greatness depends on God, also you have a responsibility to play. I mean, it is God's duty to make you rich. It's God's duty to make you great. It's God's duty to, to help you to be victorious in every challenge that you face. But you will ask yourself, what is my responsibility? A mother's responsibility at a stage is to provide food for the baby. Am I right? And all the food. And also, the mother's responsibility is to induce the baby to eat. But the truth is that after some time, the baby grows up and the mother begins to share responsibility. Formerly, the mother washed the plates, did all the cooking. But now there is something the baby will do too. Maybe from bringing the plates to serve, from packing the plates, from washing the plates. And later on, the mother now moves on and says, okay, you have other responsibility now. You have got to start cooking. And they train the child. So the responsibility increases with independence. So the more the child starts becoming independent, the more the responsibility of the child will increase. The same thing spiritually, as you are growing and you are maturing spiritually, you begin to gain some form of independence and God is expecting you to take some decision 
and do some things. But if you neglect your responsibility, then you will find that the other side will be failure. For example, a child has grown up, can now cook food, knows how to do all those things. All the mother does is make sure the food is bought and is available at home. I'm hungry, go to the kitchen. True or false? And if the child doesn't go, what happens? Hunger. The child will remain hungry. So you find that many times when we are supposed to have grown, we are still expecting um, the Holy Spirit to spoon feed us. So he allows us to suffer so that we can learn to be responsible. So this morning I will share with you um, things that you need to do so that God can do his own part. And as you do it, you will be happy that you did it. Amen. There are many promises that God has given us. For example, in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1 to 3, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1 to 3 or 2, we can say, It shall come to pass if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God, to observe carefully all his commandments, all, the, all his commandments which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high. In fact, the old King James Version says, on high, above all nations of the earth. And these are words carefully and consciously chosen. The Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth. Verse 2 says, and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. So let me just ask you this morning, when you read the list of blessings from verse 3, the lipstick blessings from verse 3 up to verse 13, the listed blessings, it includes provision, supplies, it includes blessing of money, it also includes victory, in the time of challenge. It includes also dignity and honor that people, you will command respect all over the world. People will magnify you, they will honor you. So you can read the details of the blessings that God gave in that Deuteronomy 28 from listed in details from verse three to 13. Now, then he concluded to them, he said, if you will diligently. So there are two things there. Now, to be diligent means to prompt, to be prompt in attending to duty, to quickly attend to and focus on duty. So diligently, what is the duty here? Obey the voice of the Lord of God. So the Lord your God, what are you to obey? His voice. What's in his voice? What he says. What does his voice bring to you? His instructions. So, he said, if you do this, that is your responsibility. Then he, the Lord your God, will set you on high. So, it is his own duty to lift you and set you up. But it's your own duty to listen to his voice. Hear what he's saying and obey it. So when people don't come to listen to the word of God, they don't have time to listen to the word of God. They can't even hear what he has to say. So you need to create priority time to hear God. And don't just end up by hearing God and knowing what he said in your head, but apply it, obey what God says. People are finding it difficult to have breakthroughs because there are some missing things. They hear the word of God, but they don't obey it. They hear the word of God in a hurry. They don't pay attention to the details. I, I pay attention. I say, look, what's in this? If God says he's going to set me up on high, I, I really want to be high. How many of you want to be high? So I just say to you, the higher you go, the closer you are to God. Where is God? He's up. Thank you very much. 
The richer you become, the closer you are to God because he's the richest. The wiser you become, the closer you become to God, you are, you are to God because he's the wisest. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The stronger you become, the more powerful you become, the closer you are to God because he's the most powerful. The holier you become, the closer you are to God because he is the most holy. So which means, if you don't start growing to greatness, you are not getting closer to God. So in every dimension, you need to improve yourself. You need to become richer. You need to become holier. You need to become wiser. You understand what I'm saying now? Don't say, where I have reached is enough. But how do you become holier? How do you become wiser? How do you become more knowledgeable? How do you become bolder? How do you become more powerful? Simple. Hear my voice and obey my commandments. So as you do that, I will be the one. That means I will increase you in wisdom. I will increase you in power. I will increase you in righteousness. I will increase you in riches. I will increase you in intellect. So he says, I will set you up on high. Set you up on high doesn't mean he's going to build a ladder and, and then put you on top of the ladder. No. Set you up on high means that I will make you higher and better and greater and mightier than all other nations of the earth. Above all nations of the earth. So the first prayer this morning is, Lord, help me to understand your voice. And the second prayer is, help me to obey your voice. Because that seems to be our key responsibility. I don't have a problem with the God side. Leave God's responsibility to him. The problem we have is our own side. We believers do not pay attention. Something as simple as forgive your brother. Something as clear as honor God with your tithes. We are analyzing it. We are checking it out. Something as simple as thou shall not hate. Something as simple as love your neighbor like yourself. We are analyzing it. How shall we do that? Are we really to do it totally? Am I to be committed? Something like, don't commit fornication. We are realizing, should I not? Should I? You know, he said, if you diligently obey, the, and people want to be great. I, how many of you want to be great? Look, I hate being downtrodden. I don't want to be at the bottom of the ladder. I hate being a beggar. I hate poverty. If you hate poverty, like me, let me see your hand. Oh, thank you. I hate failure. Shame, disgrace is attached to it. I hate defeat. I hate anybody harassing me or threatening me. I want to be at peace. I want to be bold. I want to be confident. But now he's saying, look, I am ready to make you great. I'm ready. I am the almighty God. I'm going to take you to the top. But you've got your own duty. And the duty is simple. So rise to your feet this morning and say, Lord Jesus, I am ready to go to the top. In every good thing, I am ready for your greatness. And you have promised to set me up on high. You have promised to make me great. You have promised to lift me up. But you commanded me to pay attention to your voice and to obey your commandments. I yield my heart to you. Father, grant me understanding, deep understanding of your word, of what you want. And also grant me willingness in my heart to do what you want, to obey your instructions. In the name of Jesus. Now go ahead and pray that prayer in 30 seconds. Lord, I am sincerely telling you today that I want to do your instructions. I want to obey your commandments. I, I, I want to fulfill what you have ordained for me to do. 
I don't want to disobey you. I just want to understand and follow whatever you say. Grant me understanding, Lord. Grant me revelation. Grant me light in my heart that I will see the wisdom in what you have told me to do. And I will be convinced and convicted to obey you. And I will obey you. Grant me a willingness to obey you. Let my heart never rebel against your commandment. Let me never kick against what you command me. Let me learn to honor you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Let me hear another amen. amen. Please be seated. It is not making it to the top that is the major job. It is remaining at the top. Rising and falling has since become the pattern for many. And we live in uncertainty, not knowing when the next rise will come and when the next fall will be. As if God is not able to keep us up there. There are rules that govern top dwellers. And those who make it to the top must be willing to play by the rules to remain on top. Yes, you can make it great in your academics. You can come up with first class, very good. You can come out with a distinction, very good. But will you maintain a distinction in life? When we were in school, there were, many, there were very many brilliant students. But as we came out in life, they became failures. Brilliant, but failures. Professors who are irresponsible, very brilliant. Which means somewhere on the line, even though they were endowed with this great talent or gift or skill or understanding, but their lives did not quite match up. They couldn't remain at the top. Why? They stop playing by the rules. The question is, what did you do to, to get to the top? If you obeyed God to get to the top, then to remain at the top, you must keep obeying God. Can I hear you say thank you, Jesus? <laughs> if obeying, hearing the voice of God, and obeying the voice of God is what you did that God is taking you to the top, then for you to remain at the top, you must keep hearing the voice of God and keep obeying. Simple. A lot of wisdom for you there. It's not making it great. That's the main job. It's remaining great. Rise and fall. Rising and falling has become a major characteristic of human living. As you look around, you see the men of yesterday and the women of yesterday. They are falling today. Yesterday they were up, today they are down. The question is, what did they fail to do to remain at the top? They simply stopped obeying the voice of the Lord your God, their God. When God lifted them up, they saw it as opportunity to rebel and to do whatever they like. They forgot that it was God. And they began to do whatever they like. God has said such people will come down. The Lord your God will lift you up. The Lord your God will stay you up. So how will you now remain in obedience? Everybody say fear of God. You know when you become so rich and so powerful that everything you want to do gets done. You become so wise, so intelligent, that you solve almost any problem. You may forget that it is God helping you, and you may think it is your power. For example, you wake up in the morning, you move your hand, you're able to move. You carry your legs, it's moving. You run, and so on. You may not even ever remember to say, God, thank you for waking me up. Thank you for giving me strength. Because you have... Thought that is all by your strength and power. Hmm. Dr. Gia shared a story, true story with us, of a man who was operated on prostate enlargement because he suddenly lost his ability to urinate. 
and became very troublesome to him. And the children had to take him to the hospital and they operated on him and then he got well. But they paid quite some money and then he was able to urinate again. So the doctor said he went to see him during his recovery, you know, before final discharge and Baba was in tears. He said, Baba, why are you crying? Are you not happy that you are well? He said, I've been very ungrateful to God. The man is over 70. He said, for over 70 years, I urinated the way I liked. But I never one day said thank you to God. Now, for me to be able to urinate again, my children have had to come and pay a lot of money. And doctors have had to cut me. I discovered that I was very unthankful to God. I never, never knew that it, I needed to thank God. I took it for granted. Now, I'm now thanking God that I'm able to urinate again. You see, we, we are so blessed that we forget. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We forget and despise God. No matter how wise you are, no matter how talented, you, no matter how gifted, it is the gift of God. You need to make reference to him and walk in the fear of God. Because whatever you have today can be withdrawn. There have been people who had voice. They were speaking. They were great orators. But something happened to their voice. And nobody could hear them again. So when nobody can, when you cannot produce sound, can you be an orator? They can't even hear you. So when the man is talking now, he uses his hand to try to describe what he's saying. There are people that have been great sportsmen, great athletes. But something just happened to their knees and they couldn't play football again. They couldn't run again. All the years that they were running, they were saying, I am the fastest. I am the greatest scorer i'm the greatest this i'm the greatest and they boast but when god just touched one knuckle on their knee they said you see i cannot run again they did not give glory to god so remain in the fear of god no matter how great you become it is that fear of god that will help you to continually obey his instruction so for you to remain at the top you must keep on walking in the fear of the Lord. So let's rise up and pray. Say, Father, for the rest of my life, I will not lose your fear. No matter how much you bless me, no matter how great I become, I will continue to fear you, to honor you, to tremble at your word, never to despise your word, never to despise your commandment. Please, Lord, I ask you today, Help me never, never to become foolish and begin to despise your word. All the days of my life, every day of my life, I will walk in the fear of the Lord. As it is written, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Help me, Lord, never to lose wisdom. I will continually fear the Lord. Honor his commandments in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray for yourself. Lord, help me to walk in your fear so that I will not lose greatness. Thank you, Father. Glory be to God. In Jesus' name we pray. Please be seated. I said to you that the higher you go, the closer you are to God. Because the Lord God is the most high. He's the wisest. He's the strongest. He's the most powerful. He's the richest. He is the oldest. So as you are increasing in glory, you are getting closer to God. In Revelation chapter 19 verse 6, he is the omnipotent God. All powerful, all wise, all knowing God. So the higher you go in any positive dimension, the closer you are to him. Which means, if God moves you from being a manager to becoming a general manager, you have gone higher. Am I right? You are closer to God. So every general manager should be holier. 
if God makes you moves you from being general manager of operations and moves you to become the MD or CEO of the company, have you moved higher? So that means if God moves you from a deacon to a minister, you have come higher. From a minister to a pastor, you have come higher. So if God is lifting you higher like that, then you should be increasing in your holiness and obedience to God. So the higher you go in any positive dimension, the closer you are to God. And that puts a demand on you. So when you become a governor, it's not time to start parting. Many born again Christians, after God lifted them up, they became governors. Some say, uh, uh, God governor, you know, you are not governor of everybody. Now you are going to be sociable now. Uh, you know I'm a Christian. Say, look, look, it doesn't stop you from, you know, you are a governor of the people. The people must like you. So you find that born again Christians who became governor, who became minister, started doing unthinkable things because they are now in charge. But God has just given you opportunity to come closer to him <clears throat> as a governor and you have decided to break the commandments of God. So going higher in life, becoming richer in life is no reason for you to start backsliding it's no reason because it's like God has lifted you high then you decided that look I want to go down to the pit to join the pigs in eating you are like the prodigal son whose story Jesus Christ shared with us in St. Luke's gospel chapter 15 he said this boy took his inheritance got his independence a lot of money and decided to go partying he said, what is the fear of God? When I was at home, daddy was restraining me. I don't need this fear of God. What is the fear of God? No, 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 no. I'm going to enjoy myself. Independence from God is going to the pit. Little did he know that that money has limit. Little do the governors realize that their terms have limit. Until they are getting close. One week to the end of their tenure. Then they start realizing it. One month to the end of their tenure. Little did the presidents know that there is going to be a day to give account to God. Little does man know that he does not own tomorrow. For example, one of our big men just died. He thought he would still be here by today. He even boasted, he said, when I come, I'll come and sign your document. He never came back to sign the document. So if God lifts you high, it's not time to go and start eating with the pigs. Who are the pigs? Sinners. God has made you a governor. God has made you a president. You used to earn 50,000 naira. God has now made you to start earning 1 million naira. Is it time to go back to be, <coughs> to be a palo? A lot of our brethren, they say because pastor does not see, God does not see. God blesses them. They go back to be a palo. They think I'm not seeing. But do I need to see? If God sees, he can show me. If God doesn't show me, he has seen. A lot of our brethren, when God gives them small position, they become thin gods. No time to pray. No time to go to church. No time to fellowship with God. No time to fast. The higher you go in any positive dimension, the closer you are to him. If so, then the holier you should become. Because as you are moving closer to God, you should be seeing yourself clearly and say, ah, I'm very close to God now. I cannot be doing those things I used to, to do. Any greatness that is anti-God is a greatness in the opposite direction. And it's a greatness that we crash. It's a greatness that we destroy. If God makes you president and you are anti-Jesus and anti-God, your presidency will destroy you. If God makes you rich, and you decide to be ungodly, the riches will destroy you. If God makes you great and successful in any area, and you don't give the glory to God, and you are fighting God, you are going contrary to God, that greatness will destroy you. I don't need to pursue you. I don't need to pursue and fight with people that are reckless, people who speak against God, people who kill because you have position, you kill others, you shed blood. No, 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 no. no. Do whatever you want. Every greatness that is used against God will certainly destroy those who are doing it. Remember Pharaoh. Remember Nebuchadnezzar. These are two men 
that God made very great, even though they were unbelievers. But because they did not honor God in their greatness, they destroyed themselves. How did Pharaoh end up in the Red Sea? He couldn't even send his generals to go and capture Moses. He wanted to go by himself. I can hear him say, that Moses, I will let him know that I, I will let him know. I will teach him the lesson of his life. That Moses, I will arrest him personally and bring him here and drag him in the mud before all the people. He perished in the Red Sea. Nebuchadnezzar became an animal for seven years. Simple. He said, this greatness is the result of my labor and my hard work. It was turned into an animal for seven years. So any greatness that is used against God is sure to crash woefully. You will not crash. So we are going to pray this morning, Father, I will not rise and fall. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I will not rise and fall. I will keep on rising and rising. For the rest of my life, every greatness you give me, I will use it to glorify you. Shall we stand to our feet? Say, Father, thank you for this revelation. I will not rise and fall. Every greatness you give me, I will use it to honor you, never to go against you. I will keep on rising, moving to greatness. From one greatness to a higher greatness. For the rest of my life, I will not fall. I will not crash. I will become richer. I will become wiser. I will become stronger. I will become healthier. I will become more successful. Every day of my life, whatever I lay my hands upon to do, I will succeed. Things will keep getting better. Because it is the Lord that is lifting me up. It is the Lord that is lifting me up. And the same Lord will preserve me at the top. In the name of Jesus. Anything I will do that will bring me down. I will never do it. By the grace of God. The Holy Spirit will never allow me to indulge in any foolishness. That will bring me down. In Jesus name. Give God thanks and praise him. You will not come down. You will not crash. Thank you father. Thank you Lord. Glory be to God. In Jesus name we pray. You may be seated. And the final part of this is this. I have looked at it. What is it that makes people to crash? Pride goes before destruction. And an haughty spirit before a fall. The thing that really plays a major role in people falling and crashing is pride. You will not fall. So if you discover that you are flying high and things are beginning to slow down, just ask yourself, which area has pride come in? Oh? Which area has pride now come into my life? Because this going down is not the will of God. People think that um, their blessing is just the result of their hard work only. No, you may work hard. If God does not bless you, it will result in zero. Some people even think that, um, as a pastor, that when I run around and I have a lot of invitations, that's what gives me a lot of money. I have proved that wrong many times. So at the times I get the greatest amount of money are the times that I sit down praying and fasting. <laughs> So God is saying that when you are spending time with me, I bless you more. It's not when you are running around. To which is hard work, labor. No, no, no. God, I, I have proved it many times. I have proved it over and over. So I have learned my lesson in life that my blessing comes from God. Now, if my blessing comes from God, should I ever honor myself for the blessing? Who should take the honor? Who should take the glory? So, Young people, you have a long way to go. And that means for the next 10 years, when I see you, you must be much higher than where you are now. In 20 years' time, you must still be much higher than where you are, where you will be in 10 years' time. Am I right? Uh -huh. So, if you are wise, you will follow this instruction. Humility is the key.
For God lifts up the humble, but he brings down the proud. That is what he said in the New Testament and Old Testament. He resists the proud, but he lifts up the humble. Like the scripture I read with, for you, with lowly is the wisdom, with wisdom. And then also you need to understand that God deliberately lifts up people that are humble. It is his character. It is his lifestyle. That, God, that is what God is happy to do. He is always happy to lift up people that are humble. So one more prayer you will pray today. Lord, clothe me with the spirit of humility. In the book of 1 Peter chapter 4. James chapter 4 verse 6. James chapter 4 verse 6. He said, but he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. When God is fighting the proud man, God is giving favor to the humble man. God will not fight you. I say God will not resist you. God will not trouble you. But while God is troubling the proud man, blocking the proud man, God goes to the humble man and gives him favor, helps him. But for the proud man, ah, God said he's on his own. God gives grace to the lowly. These six things God hates. Pride is abomination to him. A proud look, a lying tongue. Proverbs 29, 23. Proverbs 29, 23. Says, a man's pride will bring him low. But honor will uphold the humble in spirit. That's promotion for the humble in spirit. A man's pride will bring him low. In fact, Psalm 138, verse 6. Psalm 138, verse 6. He said, do... The Lord be high, yet has he respect to the lowly, to the humble. But for proud people, he knows them are far off. Mm -hmm, that proud man, don't let him come near me. Ah! May God not resent you. So, I want you to ask yourself, in what way am I proud? Am I still lifting myself? And I told you yesterday, a simple analysis of knowing that you are proud is, you know that you are this rich. This is your level of money but you want everybody to see you as if you are here. You are proud. A humble man is a man that God has placed here, but he's putting himself here. The advantages of humility are many. Your enemy will misread you because he will see you at that low level and think that this is your capacity, but you are here. So the enemy will attack you at this level or come a little bit higher to attack you. But when he now attacks you at that level that he thinks you are, because you are here, you will confront him. You will smash him. Hey, I didn't know you were this rich. One preacher came here. He saw our crusade equipment. I think we were preparing for that uh, 2003 crusade that we did at the other side of the land. When the man came, he saw. He, saw, he called one of his staff he said come this equipment where did people borrow them he said no we didn't borrow them he said what do you mean he said it's our own you mean your pastor has got he said ah when did you people get all of this another one bishop he came here he called one of the staff after i've left he said do you mean that all this building is for the church he said yes so you people rent it out so you are getting money every day he said, hey, this your pastor must be very rich. Can you imagine? What happened to them is that they are so full of self, they don't give glory to God. But when you are a humble man, people will see you outside. They will rate you like this. 
And that is the level at which they will want to fight you. So when they come to hit you, boah! And they find you are still standing. And then you lift your hand and crush. So I didn't know you are this strong. But when you are here, and you paint picture that you are here, what will happen? Everybody who wants to fight you will come at that level. And when they land you, one man went to join politics because he has made money but he didn't have spiritual power he didn't have that spiritual power of darkness and he has spiritual power of light in all your state he joined politics so when they saw that he was making way because he was bringing out money and the area boys were just going around him and they were hailing him and they said we shall be your bodyguard and you know, and he was really making way. People said, ah, one new politician has come. We are going to vote for him. We are tired of these old politicians. The old politician just said, where is he coming from? He seen any calls? He said, don't worry, we shall try him. So they fired him first, they fired him second, and he landed in the hospital. <laughs> so the doctors were now running around. He couldn't come out. Two days, three days. The land was in hospital, five days. So the old politician went to him, he said, I thought you were a man. You, you wanted to join us. You started making waves and everybody was killing you. I didn't know you didn't have protection. We just sent you one small arrow. See, you have come to hospital. He said, when you get well, come back and join us. Come and spend more money. After they discharged the man from the hospital, <laughs> he didn't go back to politics. You know what happened to him? He carried himself like this. He just felt that like, now I'm qualified and I can be the governor of this state. I will deal with anybody. I have enough money. You fool. You are going to pray, Father, let me never take glory for what you are doing. Let me never become proud. Stand to your feet. Say, Father, I reject the spirit of pride. For the rest of my life, I will walk in humility. I will honor you. So you will keep on protecting me. You will give me more grace. You will keep lifting me higher. Give me the spirit of wisdom. Clothe me with wisdom. Give me the spirit of humility. Clothe me with humility. Please, Lord, teach me how to be humble. Help me to humble myself. To stop boasting. To stop being arrogant. To stop raising myself above my real situation. Help me, O oh Lord. To give you glory for where I am. Go ahead and give thanks to the Lord. Let the Lord help you for the rest of your life. That you will not take yourself as more important than you are. Glory be to God. In Jesus name we pray. Today I pray for you that it shall be well with you. The spirit of humility will rest on you. That abominable spirit of pride will not come upon you. It will not fall on you. In the name of Jesus, you will not be arrogant. You will not be foolish. You will not use your greatness against God. When God lifts you up, you will honor God the more. And as you honor God the more, God will lift you higher. You will keep on rising. You will not crash. You will only go higher. You will never go down. The Lord will lift you up, will keep you up. The Lord will preserve you. His mercy shall be for you. Every day of your life, you will record testimonies. Your life will give glory to God. Every day of your life, you will give honor to God. And God will keep honoring you. It shall be well with you. It shall be well with your children. Everything you touch will prosper. The Lord himself will direct your footsteps. He will direct your path. He will inspire you. He will take you to the place where your blessing is waiting for you. You will not wander in vain. You will not make mistakes. Spirit of error will be far from you. The spirit of God will guide you. The one who knows all truth and all secrets will guide you. He will direct you. Favor will clothe you like a garment. You will be favored. Because the Lord loves you, people will love you. Because you humble yourself, the Lord will honor you. You will not lose favor. Glory be to God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let me hear another amen. amen.
acceptance, my Lord and my God. Thank you for the opportunity to hear what I have heard and to see what I have seen. I surrender my life to you. I acknowledge that I come from you and that I will return to you. You are my God and my creator. Thank you for sending Jesus, your only begotten son, to take over my sin and to pay the price for my sin. Thank you for providing Jesus so that I can escape the consequence of my sins. I confess today my faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I accept him as my Lord and Savior. Lord Jesus, take over my life. Take over my sins. Take over the judgment that is due to me. And grant me your peace. Grant me your freedom. I receive forgiveness for all my sins. I receive mercy from God. Even in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. I also receive eternal life. Because you have promised me that anyone who believes in Jesus shall have everlasting life. I do believe in Jesus as the Son of God and as my Savior. Therefore, I receive eternal life. Therefore, I have eternal life. Thank you, Father. You have promised that you will not reject anyone that comes to you. You have also promised to forgive all those lost in who repent of their sins and call on your name. You have also promised it together we that nothing shall take me out of your hand. Lord Jesus, I belong to you. Thank you for taking over my life. Nothing will pluck me out of your hand. I will serve God for the rest of my life. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father saving my soul. Thank you for accepting me. In Jesus' name. Amen.